Knowledge for Men, episode 54. Welcome to knowledgeformen.com, where boys turn into men, where men turn into leaders, into lions, the ferocious few who stand strong, a place where you grow to become the man you were born to be. It's time to take massive action towards the life you want, get the health, get the relationships, business, and career you've always dreamed of, achieve a level of success and happiness that you've been searching for for so many years. Life has given you enough, and it's time to take a stand and take full control of your life. Stand with us as we interview the most inspiring and successful leaders to give Give you real world advice to crush life and awaken the sleeping giant inside of you. This episode is brought to you by my private online men's group called The Lion's Den. You can check it out at knowledgeformen.com and click on The Lion's Den. If you've been listening to this podcast and you like the content, but find it hard to find other guys out there to relate to, talk to, share your wins and challenges with, maybe you're on your own path of personal development and other guys think it's weird or they're just not interested in what you're doing. You kind of feel like you're alone on this mission, but you're not. There's thousands of other guys out there who are on the same path and I've been putting together a group called The Lion's Den to try and find these guys, bring them together. Hey, I know it's hard to make the push towards greatness in your life and I found that the best way to get somewhere you've never been is to surround yourself with other people who are already there or who are on the same path as you. So The Lion's Den does just that. It's a group of men who want to achieve greatness in all areas of life, health, wealth, relationships, and personal growth. Check it out at knowledgeformen.com and click on The Lion's Den. All right, guys, welcome to the show. I'm here with Mark Manson, and after many requests from listeners to get him on the show, I finally have him here. Mark is an entrepreneur, life enthusiast, and world traveler. He's been a digital nomad since 2009, and Mark is known and and made popular from the book he wrote, Models, Attract Women Through Honesty. All right, Mark, happy to have you on the show. Thanks for having me here, Andrew. It's good to be here. All right, Mark, let's go on with a favorite success quote of yours and why. Well, it's funny. You sent me before the show, you said that you you wanted this. I mean, my favorite quote in the world, it doesn't sound like a success quote, but it's actually, it's brought a lot of success to my life and I love it. It's a quote by David Foster Wallace. It goes, you will stop worrying so much about what people think of you when you realize how seldom they do. And when you first hear that, it sounds really depressing. It's like, oh, nobody thinks about me. But when you really think about it and the way that Foster Wallace used it is basically the idea that everything you and I do, every mistake we make, every embarrassment that we have, everything we feel stupid about, nobody really cares about that. Everybody's going to forget about that at some point. And so that means that there's really no excuse to not live out how you truly want to live out because the world's not paying attention to you in the first place. So why are you so worried about failing or embarrassing yourself or anything else like that. So it kind of, it's like a backwards way into a really nice conclusion. I really like it. It's, re- it's very powerful for me. And was this something that you had to experience or go through and you finally just, you know, I'm done. You know, I'm just going to start doing what I want to do because that's what matters to me. What, what really triggered that? For me, I experienced this and then, and then I've, you know, I've spoken to tons of guys that, that have experienced this as well. When you're really nervous about something or when you're very insecure about something, you kind of develop these delusional beliefs that everybody's paying attention to it. So if you think about it, it's like, just to use a really dumb example, it's like if you have like a stain on your shirt and you're like really insecure about the stain on your shirt because you're going to meet some people that you want to impress or something, like you start thinking that everybody is looking at that stain on your shirt and everybody sees it and everybody knows how sloppy you are or whatever. But meanwhile, you don't realize that 10% of the people in the room also have stains on their shirt. And it's kind of this idea that whenever we're afraid or anxious about something in our lives, we really, really overestimate. Because it's such a big deal to us, we overestimate how big of a deal it is to other people. And the funny thing is, is that everybody's walking around feeling that same way. Everybody's walking around thinking that everybody else is looking at them like, or concerned about the same things that they are. When the truth is, is that we're all busy worrying about our own stuff so it just it really was kind of a good way for me to realize to just let go everybody is kind of obsessed with their own problems and anxieties and stuff and so there's no reason to think that i'm being judged all the time by people right so everyone's so busy thinking about what other people are thinking about them that no one's even really paying attention (laughs) yeah exactly (laughs) 
All right. And now let's go in and go ahead and, you know, share with the audience your story and, and share with the listeners how you got started with what you do. Oh, man. It's been a long, <laughs> it's been a long time now. <laughs> I know. It's super, <laughs> well, super it, broad. <laughs> it, it's funny, too. I mean, I just turned 30, and so I'm, I'm starting to have these old man moments. So I got into this stuff when I was 20. Old man moments. What is this? Yeah. I've been involved, or I guess I would say consciously uh, bettering myself, but also kind of, I, I guess you'd say like focus on my life as a man and, and dating life um, for about 10 years now. So when I was 20, my first girlfriend cheated and left me. I was really, really messed up by that. And it's, I didn't really know what to do with myself. I, in my head, I had kind of been the perfect boy and it just kind of destroyed everything I thought I knew about women and relationships and life and everything. So I went and I, I, started looking around at books and I found, I actually got really into the whole pickup artist thing. This is back 2005 or something like that. I got really into it for a couple of years. And at the time for me, that was it. It was like, oh, this solves everything. It solves my social anxiety issues and my women issues and shows me how to be a dominant alpha male and all this stuff. And I, I spent a few years doing that and I actually became pretty successful at it. And to the point where I actually started coaching other guys. And I coached other men for a couple of years. And <laughs> it was kind of one of these, on paper, I had this like life of a rock star thing, I guess. It's like I was flying around the country and over to Europe to like go out to nightclubs and help these guys get girls and all this stuff. I was just, it was not satisfying at all. It was actually, I, I actually became pretty depressed. My lifestyle was pretty unhealthy. And, you know, even though some of my, I was helping like clients, you know, meet girlfriends and get laid and stuff like that. It, it just, it, it wasn't a very fulfilling path. So I kind of, I got very introspective for a little while, took some time off. I was maybe 24, 25 at this point. And I kind of took a look at my life and, you know, when you're early 20s, everything you want in life is to travel and make money and bang girls. And <laughs> like I had all those things and I was still unhappy. So it really started making me look at, well, okay, what's actually important? What do I really need to pay attention to? And so what did you actually find to be important? And what did you come to the conclusion to after doing all of this? So what the conclusions that I kind of slowly started working my way towards is that it's about connecting with other people. And I use the word connecting with other people because that you can connect with other people in kind of like superficial and short term ways and then like deep and long term ways. Both are still valuable. The point is that you just need to connect with people and like empathize with people and feel like camaraderie with them. And that goes for women and men. And then also just a higher, like a deeper purpose or meaning behind what I was doing. It's Everything I had kind of been focused on began to feel a little bit superficial. So I started asking myself, you know, it's like, okay, let's say in 10 years I've got kids. What would my kids think of my life right now? <laughs> what would I want my kids to think? Or I started thinking about like, okay, when I'm 60 and I'm looking back at my 20s, what, what am I going to think of myself? Like, what's the legacy I want to leave? Which are hard questions. So that's when I started really kind of redirecting my dating my pickup business more into it was still a dating advice business, but it was much more about becoming emotionally healthy as men, uh, generating kind of emotional connections, having honest relationships with women that were fulfilling and, and enjoyable. And then from there, it kind of branched out a little bit more to kind of what it is now in terms of it, defining a life path for yourself, finding a career that lines up with your values, discovering what your values are. So it's been a long process. It's been a slow process, but that's basically cliff notes. And, you know, that's good. And uh, Mark, can you elaborate a little bit more on what you meant by to be an emotionally healthy man? Sure. So there are a couple different contexts you could look at it, but in the context of relationships, what I really focused on and what the big focus on in models is that people, they're most men fall into one of two categories. Either they put women on a pedestal or put people on a pedestal. They become people pleasers. They see that they base all of their decisions and motivations on what they think other people will think, what they think other people will like. Oh, if I say this, this woman will like me. If I, sit, if I do this, these people will think I'm funny. Oh, I've got to go to this thing because I want this woman to like who I am. All of their actions are based on other people's values. And then and that's not healthy. 
And then other men go the exact opposite route, which is all they care about is their own values. So they're like, oh, well, I want to get laid, so I'm going to say and do whatever I want to get that. And it's not my fault if she doesn't like me or if she finds out I'm lying or whatever. And the true synthesis there is to value yourself value your own needs and base your actions and motivations on your own needs and your own your own desires but also account for the needs and desires for others as well so like be accountable to other people and it's really interesting it's hard to get people to that space everybody tends to want to go to one extreme they either want to please everybody around them and sacrifice themselves and their eyes, or they want to just be like selfish pricks and forget about everybody else. It's very hard to kind of come to that middle where you have a healthy understanding of your own needs and the needs of others, and then try to meet both of those simultaneously. Yeah, I read something similar on your blog where you said, you know, treat others well, and others will treat you well, and treat yourself well. Yes, yes, absolutely. And you have something called the law of F, yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, I thought it okay. slapped me in the face. It's just real. It's raw. It's straight to the point, which I really like and appreciate. So can you elaborate on the law of F, yes, for all the listeners? Sure. So I'll translate it to uh, the law of hell, yes, or no. So I wrote a post last year called Hell Yes or No. And basically the idea is this, or you can insert the F word if you want. The, the idea is this, is that basically what I started to discover in a lot of areas of life is that it's kind of this concept of if you have to ask, that's your answer. So people would email me and they'd give me this like long story and they'd be like, I don't know if I can trust my girlfriend. What should I do? Do you think I can trust her? And my answer, I just started coming to the conclusion consistently is if you have to ask, then that's your answer. Like if you have to ask if you trust your girlfriend or not, then you don't trust your girlfriend. <laughs> Otherwise you wouldn't be asked. And you can apply kind of the same concept to career choices, friendships, hobbies, or groups you want to participate in, places you want to live. And what I discovered is that a lot of people get really stuck in kind of this messy gray area of, well, I kind of like my job and it makes me a decent amount of money, but my boss treats me like crap and I'm depressed all the time. So I don't know if I should keep it or quit. And if, if you aren't a hell yes about your career, then that's a huge problem. It's just your standard for yourself should be that high and that you expect a hell yes out of your decision. So what I created was the law of hell yes or no. And I used it specifically in the article for the context of dating, which is basically if you're pursuing a woman or talking to a girl and she's not a hell yes, if you're sitting there, you're like, ah, oh, you know, her hair is nice and she lives close to me. Like, eh, why not? It's a no. If you're not enthusiastic about it, if you're not, if there's not like a visceral emotional reaction there, then it should be a no. And what that does is, first of all, there's all sorts of benefits to it. First of all, it limits you basically to things that you're excited about in your life. So it immediately kind of like screens out all of kind of the mediocre blah stuff from your life. And it hones you in on what you're excited about, what you're excited to do. The second thing is that when you get rid of all that kind of mediocre blah stuff, it removes a lot of like unnecessary, unimportant decision making or just kind of agonizing over decision making. You get a lot of a lot of men are like, well, she called twice, but then she, when I called her back, she didn't call me back. But now she texted, should I hang out with her? You know, it's like, dude, stop wasting your mental energy on something like that. Like, it's, if it's not a hell yes, then it's a no. And so it's a no. And as soon as you start eliminating a lot of these kind of gray area experiences, you free up so much mental bandwidth to focus on more important things and, and to dedicate the things that you're actually excited about. And then the last major benefit that I talk about is that it removes all sorts of ambiguity from particularly like relationship situations. So you don't have to worry about, do I like her enough to do this? Or does she like me enough, enough to do this? Because there are a lot of ethical problems there. If you're in a relationship where you're not sure of each other's intentions or how much you like each other. There are a lot of ethical problems. So it's like, oh, am I pressuring her too much and rude? Am I being too pushy? It gets rid of all those problems because it's just she's either a hell yes or she's not. And if she's not, then why are you wasting your time with somebody who's not hell yes about you? Your standard for yourself should always be people should be enthusiastic and excited 
to be with me. And if they're not, then that's not a person I want to be with. So yeah, it's the things that we were talking about earlier in terms of respect other people, have other people respect you and then show respect for yourself. The law of hell, yes or no, it's a nice heuristic. It's not perfect. Obviously, there's always going to be kind of exceptions or like certain situations where you can't apply it. But it's a nice shortcut to help us start arriving at these types of decisions and behaviors that can help us live like this. All right. Don't fight and persist to get women who's who aren't even interested. I mean, simply move on and spend that time finding the women who are equally saying hell yes back to you. Right, right. And Mark, I'm interested in you know your growth from studying pickup to where you are now, which is expressing your truth, being vulnerable and honest with your intentions with women. Sure. So yeah, vulnerability, I started to realize that vulnerability was actually a hugely attractive trait. I actually, I met this guy in Europe back in 2009. This is kind of like the height of my PUA coaching. And at the time, I was a little bit more, I don't know how to say it, like I guess principal, I, I wasn't gimmicky. Back when I taught PUA, I was never very gimmicky. I never had a bunch of like crazy lines or routines or anything like that. I, I was much more focused on just helping guys with conversational skills and, and getting good tactics and knowledge and, and things like that. But even then, I was still very focused on kind of like the external things that were happening. And I remember I met this guy in Europe, and he just blew me away. I mean, he was, first of all, he's a total lady killer. But he was pretty much the opposite of everything I had come to know and everything I had learned about women and attraction and what people wanted. I mean, he was very effeminate. He was extremely honest. He was extremely emotional. He would get women talking about... He would do almost none of the talking and all the listening. He would get women talking about like their life stories and um, he'd be like very like touchy and, and sensitive and you know, women would start crying around him. And I mean, but he was getting laid like tile and I'm like watching him, hanging out with him, and I'm like, dude, this is what are you doing? <laughs> this is re this is completely counter against everything I ever I ever learned and, and he you know he kind of just looked at me like I don't know I've just always been like this but he actually started he was hanging out with me and he's, he's like why don't you talk about yourself more and I'm like oh well you know you've got to create this sense of mystery so that she'll be more attracted to you and he's like well that's stupid like that's not fun and he really just started kind of influence me in a lot of these ways and make me look at kind of look for the deeper principles behind these things and got me experimenting with them as well and got me to kind of open up and be a little bit more emotional and vulnerable with some of the women I was with at the time. And, and the results were amazing. I mean, I always had a lot of physical relationships with women before that. But when I started doing this, it was just the quality of the experiences was so much higher. I mean, it, it felt like, you know, before that, it had always felt like I was like fighting this battle. It's like I'm going to war against... <laughs> It's like, like you're the 300 and <laughs> yeah exactly it's like, this crazy like fight. <laughs> hold your ground <laughs> don't fall yeah and it's funny too because a lot of pickup guys use kind of warlike language so you go into battle and you've got to put your armor on and you've got to have your shields up and you've got to persevere through all this and i used to kind of have that mentality and then after i started kind of opening myself up and being like really vulnerable with like how i was feeling and what i was thinking and what i wanted my experiences really just became like, like just kind of like, it was. They were much more organic. There wasn't much resistance there. I would find out pretty much immediately if if a woman was interested in me or not, and that and that was fine. And and when she was interested in me, it became like, it was just a really really enjoyable kind of almost like teamwork thing. It's like we both wanted the same thing, and so we were kind of in it together to experience it together. And so I started really thinking about vulnerability back in. 2010, 2011. And it, I realized that this is something that men are already trying to do. Like they're already doing it. They're just not, they're just doing it in different ways. So like every time you put yourself up to be rejected, you're being vulnerable. Every time you make a joke, you're being vulnerable because it might not be funny or you might embarrass yourself. Every time you reveal something important or make a bold statement or say something controversial, every time you try to kiss a woman, these are all forms of vulnerability because you're setting yourself up for rejection. You're, you're setting yourself up for failure. You're setting yourself up for pain. And so I started asking myself, like, why don't we do this with our personal and emotional lives? Why are we so vulnerable with our actions? 
you know, with approaching a woman, touching her, trying to kiss her, but not vulnerable with how we share ourselves. So like how we feel, what our goals are. I was like, that seems a little bit ridiculous. So, and what I found is that when you open yourself up more, well, first of all, the answer to that is that I found that most men, we've been kind of socialized to bury a lot of our emotions and to deny our emotional lives. We're taught that that's weakness. We're taught that that's not manly. And when most men hear vulnerability, they think of like some pussy cowering in the corner who's whining about everything. And that's not necessarily true. And in fact, the argument that I make in models is that if, if a man is able to be 100% vulnerable, vulnerable and open about all the good things about himself, all the bad things about himself, all of his insecurities and weaknesses, all of his negative feelings and thoughts, then he's really untouchable. If you as a man are comfortable with every facet of yourself and you feel like you have absolutely nothing to hide, then that is actually the truest sense of freedom in your social and emotional relationships with people. And until you reach that point, you're actually bound by a lot of these aspects of yourselves. You're held down by them, and that holds you back. In terms of the actual process of attracting women, what I found over the next few years is that opening myself up in that way not only increased my results like quantitatively, but like the quality was just through the roof. I mean, I just I started meeting just amazing, amazing women and having amazing experiences with them. And it felt with less effort than ever before. So, so yeah, vulnerability is huge. It's kind of the cornerstone of what I actually teach. Wow. It's funny because, you know, it's something I really started to realize after doing this for over a year now. And, you know, I used to hold up a shield and try and be really mysterious and not reveal my true emotions and thinking that would kind of latch the girl on and it would hook her and she would want more. Yet I'm finding that most of my breakups in the past in my life, you know, they came because I wasn't revealing my true intentions. Like even with girls that I was with for for months or years, you know, wasn't revealing my true intentions, my emotions and feelings during the relationship. And, you know, after realizing this not too long ago, I noticed just building and establishing really deep connections with women that I've just recently met by like exactly what you're talking about, really being vulnerable and revealing your true self is how I like to say it and being honest with the, your intentions and, and with how you're feeling at that moment in time, at that exact moment. And, you know, it makes me wonder a little bit, like if I was doing this the whole time, like how deep of relationships could I've had in the past? So, you know, the lessons learned and for the listeners, you know, take the lesson now, learn from others. And now, Mark, I want to go into the topic of masculinity and specifically how men viewed masculinity in the past and kind of how it's being viewed now, like the new masculinity. So there's kind of two schools of thought when it comes to masculinity. One is that it's biologically determined and that there's not a whole lot. It's like fixed and there's not a whole lot we can do about it. The other school of thought is kind of more the feminist school of thought is that it's culturally co constructed and that masculinity and femininity are completely made up and that men, because they're physically stronger, thousands of years ago invented gender norms in order to subjugate women. Both of those are, as with a lot of this stuff, the truth is somewhere in between. Having traveled the world a lot, I can tell you that masculinity masculinity norms differ quite a bit based on culture. But what I personally believe is that masculinity, like gender, I mean, there are basic biological differences between men and women, but those biological, like the way those differences play out in society are, are largely kind of based on economics and like the social realities. So 200 years ago, where 99% of the economic production of society required like big, strong men and manual labor, like it made sense for men to be closed off and stoic and to value hard work and to be a little bit emotionally callous and violent. But in 2014, that doesn't really make sense a whole lot anymore. And so it makes sense that we're kind of seeing masculinity change over the last couple of generations with the, the rise of mass media and the internet, the service economy, all these things. It's a lot of the, the values that used to define masculinity it don't aren't necessarily economical anymore and so i i actually kind of see us as a, like a transition generation we've almost got like, like an identity crisis as a generation as the blueprint that our our fathers and our grandfathers had for how to be men doesn't make sense for us but at the same time like 
there's not really a clear answer going forward. So it's really important for us to just find a sense of purpose and something to drive us for ourselves. You know, whether that be working on cars in our spare time or uh, writing a screenplay or designing a tower or wh whatever it is. I mean, each man needs to find some sort of like higher purpose and higher goal that he's working towards. In the 21st century, that's probably going to look a lot different than it did in previous generations. And that's okay. It doesn't need to look the same. I like the lost generation of males. And when you say this, I kind of think about the rise of feminism. It's clear that women have made significant strides in their social status and society in uh, the last few generations, and men have taken a few steps down. Not that I'm against this, but I want to point this out and discuss this with you. Yeah, I, I think it's funny. I was actually just talking to a feminist academic earlier today. She wanted to ask me some questions. Yeah, I agree with you. Feminism is thumbs up from me overall but like it's the problem is that the solutions that made sense in the 60s and 70s don't make sense in the 2000s and you know one of the issues is that one thing that I told her is I said one reason the whole pickup community and the whole pickup industry kind of exploded I mean males da men's dating advice didn't really even exist 20 years ago and then it just kind of exploded out of nowhere and now it's been huge for the last decade and I told her, I said, I think one of the big reasons that happened is because it, for the first time ever, it was necessary. You know, it was like people in the 90s and early 2000s, like men in the 90s and early 2000s, suddenly found themselves on dates with women who made more money than them or were more educated than them. And they were like, oh, crap, like, what do I do? <laughs> I don't know what to say to her. <laughs> like, this used to be good enough, but now it's not good enough anymore. So I have to figure something else out. And that's a big deal for men, that that presents a whole new range of, of problems that our generation of men has to confront that previous generations didn't have to confront. You know, it was like back in the 50s, it was like, get a good job, make a decent amount of money, and like, then go pick a wife. It's not that simple anymore. Yeah, not that simple at all. <laughs> Yeah. And you have something in models called the three fundamentals to express your truth with women. And if you could elaborate on this and really just kind of drill down what this is so the listeners can kind of take that away. Sure. So in models, what I say is that earlier I was talking about opening yourself up, becoming more vulnerable with yourself, getting more in touch with your identity and your emotions. So I lay out three different paths to do that. And I call them the three fundamentals. So the first one, it's called honest living, and it's basically lifestyle. So that means having a job or career that you enjoy, being financially independent, taking care of yourself, hygiene, dressing decently, being fit or in decent shape, and basically working on yourself and building, constructing a, an enjoyable lifestyle for yourself. Because one of the things that I ran into all the time with guys back when I was a pickup coach is, you know, these guys would want to go out and talk to like. 300 different girls, but they had no job. They lived with their mom. They were out of shape. They had no hobbies. They had no friends. And I'm like, well, what girl is ever going to date you? <laughs> you know, like you have, you, you have nothing to sell here. So like, let's work on yourself first. So yeah, it, the honest living piece beyond simply generating a lifestyle that a woman's going to want to be a part of, it also, it builds self-esteem, it builds confidence. When you build these things for yourself, it helps you know who you are. It helps you feel better about yourself. It puts you in a better mood, gives you more energy. So that's a huge component. The second component I call honest action, which is basically the overcoming of various anxieties and fears. In the context of women, the anxieties almost always center around one of two things, either social anxiety, so like speaking or approaching a new woman, or sexual anxiety, which is the fear to demonstrate sexuality, make sexual statements, ask on a date, go for the first kiss, bedroom issues. So the idea there is once you've got kind of your lifestyle together and you've got something cool going on for yourself, you feel good about yourself, the next step is to get over the fears that are holding you back. So being able to walk up to a pretty girl and, and talk to her being able to ask her out on a date, being able to go in for the first kiss and not freak out in your own head and freeze up and get all like get the shakes and whatnot. And then finally, the third one is called honest communication. And that is simply 
being able to express yourself in a very efficient and honest manner. So that means expressing your emotions well, expressing your lifestyle well. And this is where all kind of the being a good conversationalist, the conversational tactics and being able to express yourself well, developing a sense of humor. That's where all these things come in. And so the idea is that if you develop those three things in conjunction, ideally, if you, if you, if you develop those three things to a satisfactory extent, then ideally, you'll kind of be able to have a very robust and abundant dating life without, without a whole lot of conscious effort. Because if there's not anxiety there, and if you're able to express yourself freely and openly, and you've got an awesome lifestyle, then there's not really a whole lot to think about. You just go about your life and talk to pretty girls. And that's just how, how things go. And things happen. And nature's just going to take its course. <laughs> and not only with women. I mean, the three truths will help you live a fulfilling life. I think just by doing that, you're going to be happy. You're going to have more energy. You're going to feel more alive and connected to, to the world and those around you. And now, Mark, let's now jump into the knowledge round. Are you ready? Sure. All right, I want to give you more details about the Lion's Den. It's a private Facebook group where you post your goals in health, wealth, relationships, and personal growth. The guys hold you accountable, and you have a place where you can get instant feedback from other high-performing men from around the world. You can get more details at knowledgeformen.com and click on the Lion's Den. There's men's coaches in there. There's dating coaches, fitness coaches, millionaires, guys with startups, guys who just graduated college and are happy to be surrounded by so many guys just making it happen for themselves. There's fathers in there, military personnel, and just all walks of life from all over the world. 70 guys strong right now and growing every day. But the one thing that we all have in common is that we just want to achieve greatness. We want to push ourselves. We want to challenge ourselves. We want to really just become the men we want to become and do it not alone. We don't want to do this journey, take this path alone. We want to do it together with other men. And that's what I find so powerful about this group. We also do monthly Google Hangouts, which is sort of like an online meetup with about 12 guys in each hangout. So you can meet all these guys and build stronger relationships with other high-performing men. And there's also a structure to each hangout. Guys, this group only costs $19 a month for a limited time. You can get more details and you can set up a consultation with me at knowledgeformen.com and click on the lines den and get started from there. Welcome to the knowledge round where the guests will be asked rapid fire questions to give the audience invaluable pieces of wisdom to help transform their lives starting in three, two, one showtime. All right. And Mark, what advice would you give to someone who's feeling lost or unsure of their purpose? Um, not really sure what they're doing with their life. Try something, try anything, no matter how stupid it is, try something because when you try it, it will at least give you feedback and it'll generate new ideas. So as long as you're moving and doing something new, you're going in the right direction. It might take a long time, but at least you're going in the right direction. All right. I like it. And was there anything that was holding you back from becoming the man you are today? Oh God, man. <laughs> Where do I start? <laughs> Is that a whole nother podcast right there? <laughs> yeah. Just, uh, <laughs> let me well, hold on. Let me call my therapist. <laughs> oh yeah, tons of things. I mean, I had I had some childhood issues going on. I had some weird, really weird beliefs about women and sex going on. I've had a lot of kind of insecurities. Uh, about my business and my writing and underestimated myself in a lot of situations. So yeah, I mean, I, I've had tons of setbacks over the years. But the important thing is that you're, you're always working on them. You never, quote unquote, fix yourself. The best you can do is just keep hammering away and getting better every day. And Mark, you're a really well-traveled person. So I want to know, like, what are some of the biggest lessons that you've learned from just being a world traveler? What I've learned, and this is actually one of the best lessons that I've been fortunate enough to learn is that pretty much everybody wants the same things. It's just that everybody in every society goes about getting them in slightly different ways. At the end of the day, everybody wants to feel loved and feel important. Everybody wants to have fun and be successful at something. And everybody wants to feel safe and feel comfortable. And 
just each culture, each society, each country, um, people take a slightly different strategies to meet the same needs and same desires. But once you kind of see that, you can kind of land ev- anywhere and immediately empathize with people and whatever they're struggling with. Mm, I like that. That is, that's something different. It's not something you hear on the show all the time. And Mark, can you name someone who's had an impact on your life, a mentor? What did he or she say to you? Ooh, I've had a few mentors or, or people that I've looked up to over the years, but most of them have kind of been in my personal life. I can tell you that the most influential person or book and all the stuff that we're talking about in terms of you know masculinity and, and dating and relationships with women and vulnerability was Robert Glover's book, No More Mr. Nice Guy. I'm sure you've read it or mentioned it did on here before but I read that in 2007 and it I mean I picked I went into the bookstore I picked it up off the shelf to read I used to read like the first 10 pages or so just to see if something was good I read that thing cover to cover in the bookstore didn't even go home to read it and it blew blew my socks off man like it was really powerful at the time yeah, Dr. Glover does have a really strong message and he is on this podcast. I interviewed him and yeah, so this just leads into the next question though, but what are your most influential, three most influential books? <laughs> Since you just gave one, let's just do two more. So yeah, I love that book. I love, I can't believe he did your podcast. I tried to, I tried to interview him like a year ago and he like disappeared on me. Um Hey, man, I, I can teach you the ways of uh, podcasting. Check out uh, the podcastblueprint.com. I, I share all my secrets. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a little bit jealous and, and offended now. No, I'm not. It's yeah, good. you are. I can see your face. <laughs> so, okay, so that one was major for me. It's funny. I, I always, I always like, hesitate when I answer this because the most influential books for me were like really, really good for me at the time, but it's like looking back. I, I don't really support or like <laughs> what they say anymore. You kind of outgrow the books. Like they spoke to you in that moment at that time. Exactly. So for instance, The Game by Neil Strauss. I mean, that was massive. That book changed my life. But I read it now and I get kind of like creeped out. And then it was actually the same thing with Anne Rand's Atlas Shrugged. I read that when I was 18 years old and it blew my mind and changed my life and now I look at it now and I'm like wow she's kind of a bitch but <laughs> but I do recommend I mean read everything I mean everything Ken Wilber's work was really influential on me years ago this is I'm gonna sound really pre- pretentious right now but War and Peace by Tolstoy is the best thing that was ever written by a human being I know that sounds like super literary and academic, but like it's not. It's not an academic book. Anybody can read it, and it's it's mind blowing. So yeah, those are the things that come to mind. All right, I'll have to check out the Tolstoy book and scenario for you, Mark. Imagine you woke up and you had sixty seconds to speak with your twenty year old self. What would you tell him to do, and what would you tell him not to do? Oh man, would he listen? That's important. To <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, he'd be like, he'd be like, shut up. Punch you in the face. What do you know? <laughs> yeah, so what would I tell my 20-year-old self? So my 20-year-old self, I would say just a few things. I would tell him, you're a lot better than you think you are, and you don't have to prove nearly as much as you think you have to. I would tell him all of the things you are completely capable of the success that you want, but you can do it while being true to yourself. You don't need to copy or mimic others or, or, or try to be like them. A couple girls I would tell them not to sleep with. <laughs> I would say, it's, I, know, I know she looks good, but it's not worth oh, it. Man. And yeah, that's yeah. about it. And then I would tell them, I would say, be a little bit more responsible with your money, drink a little bit less, <laughs> and start your business sooner. That's what I would tell them. Yeah, I'd tell everybody that. And Mark, what's one underrated characteristic, underrated characteristic that you believe every man should work on? And if they did it, they would see massive results in their life. Oh, that's really good. Yeah, I, I would say being in touch with your emotions, being open with your emotions, just because you're emotionally competent, 
does not make you weak or make you a pussy. In fact, on the opposite, it makes you stronger and and more capable of achieving your goals. So it's really, really important that men start developing this an, an emotional like fluency or understanding of, of their emotional lives. It's really important. And now getting a little bit deeper, Mark, what's your philosophy on life and success? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> you want to do three podcasts now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then a podcast uh, on every topic here. <laughs> oh, gosh. And people have written thousand page books on that. My philosophy on life is basically do your best. Don't harm others if you can help it. And find some sort of greater meaning or higher purpose or something that you find more important that includes yourself but it goes beyond yourself so whether it's a cause or project or some sort of like giving back to society or some sort of express art or expression like find something that you find a deeper meaning or deeper purpose in besides just kind of your physical bodily functions and desires all right, Mark, and that's going to conclude the knowledge round. So what's exciting you today and what are you currently working on? Like what's getting you out of bed in the morning? Oh, man, I've been I'm working on a book. I've been working on a book for about six months now. I'm really excited for it. To me, it's kind of the logical next step of models. It goes beyond dating and it goes beyond masculinity. Hopefully it'll be out this summer. But um, if people are interested in it, it's going to be, there'll be, I'm going to be posting more information about it on my website, which is markmanson.net. And there's tons of different, different articles there so people can get on, an understanding of what I'm about and what I've been, what I've been writing about lately. So that's what's, that's what's exciting me these days. I'm kind of looking at the next step of my career and my writing, but it's still a few months out before I want to start talking about it a lot. So st- Stay tuned. All right. Looking forward to it. would love to have you back on for uh, that book when you're launching it. And go ahead and give yourself a plug, Mark, so all the listeners can get in contact with you. Sure. So markmanson.net is the best place to get introduced to me in my writing. There's a, there's a best of there that you can start with. Obviously, if the stuff that we've been talking about sounds good to you, check out my book, Models. It's at markmanson.net slash models, or you can find it on Amazon. It's Kindle or hard copy. I'm on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Mark Manson net. There's no space, no dot in there. And then, yeah, just keep in touch. I'm, I'm very active with my readers. Very, I, I communicate all the time with them. And, and I really, I love having kind of dialogues like this about life topics like this. So stop by the site, check some of it out. If you like it, get involved, get engaged, and I'll have a bunch of new stuff out later this year. All right, Mark, thank you so much for being on the show and spending your time with my community, sharing your journey, your failures, your lessons, and it's been a good time. I've had a really good time on the show with you here. Yeah, thanks again, Andrew. All right, guys, and that's going to wrap up episode 54 with Mark Manton. And the challenge item that I have for you guys, the action item for today, is a lot about what Mark talked about was being vulnerable, was about being honest and authentic with your feelings, your emotions, your thoughts, your words, your actions, all that right? So your challenge is to do just that, to be vulnerable, to be open, and to express your true feelings for someone you care about. So what does that mean? It means, you know, if you have a significant other, or if you have a girlfriend, or someone you're dating, or even just a family member or friend that's close to you, just tell them how you feel. Say, hey, you know, I I really value you being in my life, and I just want you to know that. You know, I really think that we're, we're headed in the right direction. I just, you know, I really wanted you to know that. Just say what's on your mind. It, there's no right answer. It's, it's just what's on your mind. And the power of that, well, you'll see. So that's the challenge item. And until next time, see you on the show. Thank you for listening to the Knowledge for Men podcast show. It's been a pleasure having you be a part of a thriving community of men who want to crush it in all aspects of life. I'm on a mission here to inspire millions of guys. And with your help, we're going to make a dent in the universe. Check out knowledgeformen.com for a ton of free content that's designed to help you live a remarkable life. Again, that's knowledgeformen.com. I hope to see you there. And always remember, 2014 is the official year of the crush, where we take action to get the life we've always dreamed of. This is your host, Andrew Farabee, and until next time, let's do it.